I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. A federal government watchdog has determined there was classified information. Did in fact contain classified information. The matter has been turned over to the FBI. There's always something there with them. Even workers in Denver that helped manage Hillary Clinton's private email server, they had concern. He was starting to think this whole thing really is covering up some shady expletive. Total lack of accountability. Well, it's like my problems have nothing to do with me. They have to do with the Republicans. They have to do with the media. They have to do with somebody They're else. They're playing it off as if it's a partisan witch hunt. Now you have the FBI and the New York Times chasing this story. The Obama administration's IG, the Obama administration's Justice Department, Stand those are not partisan organizations. Yes. You think the American public is that stupid? All right, the RNC speaking out. And uh, joining us now on the Molesburg panel, Jessica Tarlov, Democratic political consultant, political strategist at Douglas Show and LLC. And Ford O'Connell, her nemesis, a Republican strate a strategist, I should say, political analyst, and author of Hail Mary. All right, let's start with you, Jessica. That's a, as we head into the debate tonight, that's a pretty effective spot, no? I absolutely think so. And I was going to say, A, that both of you are my nemesis or <laughs> nemeses. Um, and then I was going to ask if you also helped fund that ad. Um, yeah, it's extremely hard hitting. It gets to the core of the issue right now, which is, is she honest and trustworthy? And the polls are saying not so much, though she's still up 20 points in the primary field, um, which I think is a good sign. Which is down a lot, down It is down, but it, it was never going to stay that high. And this is something that, you know, the right needs to get over. We never thought it'd be a coronation. We don't want it to be a coronation. Um, and now we're seeing the but effects of it. But it still is going to be a coronation, Jessica. Okay. Come I mean, now. if Hillary Clinton wins, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be real happy. But at the end of the day, you know, we didn't plot this in the way that the right makes it out to be. And she has a lot of questions you're right. That's to why you're actually disinviting the vice chair, because you didn't plot it that way to only have six debates just so no one else knows who's running against Hillary Clinton. How many people out there can actually name, besides Bernie Sanders, who else is running against Hillary I Clinton? I can. We're talking about Joe Biden. They're leaving an empty podium. It's that bad. <laughs> it is that bad. And, and Ford, you're right. You bring up a, a very good point here. Debbie Wasserman Schultz told the, uh, the uh, this assistant uh, director of the DNC, uh, a, con a, a, a congresswoman from Hawaii, who Jessica says is also happens to be a lesbian and just got promoted to major in the armed forces, uh, told her not to come because she's been outspoken that she wants more debates. Well, that's exactly right. And there may be one person in tonight's debate that hits Hillary Clinton on that. It might be Martin O'Malley, but I don't think we're going to hear about Benghazi or email servers. What we're going to hear, at least from Bernie Sanders and the rest of the field, is that Hillary Clinton is a political shapeshifter who has the political convictions of a weather vane in Hurricane Katrina. She was four in 2008. Same sex, she was against same-sex marriage. She was against driver's licenses for illegal aliens. She was for the Second Amendment. What is it that Hillary Clinton stands for? And I think that's what we're going to find out tonight. Well, I, Jessica, some might say it's the Clinton Foundation uh, that she stands for. But, you know, it, it, it's interesting because she, she has flip-flopped. A lot of people flip-flop. But I, I, you're not going to see, and I wonder, you know, with Anderson Cooper, who is, uh, as reported by the Weekly Standard today, was a member of the Clinton Global Initiative as the moderator of this debate, uh, I mean, if, it, it, could, could the Republicans pull that off? I mean, could a... Could well, a could absolutely not. Just think about what CNN's coverage was. When we were having a debate, they wanted to watch a slugfest and Donald Trump swing his bat all day long, and now they want everyone to have kick gloves on and focus on the issues, because when, really when most Americans that, I mean, and Don Democrats know Donald the issues. Donald Trump set the tone for the debates he has for the entire no, primary season. No, he was asked season. the questions, then he responded to them. He was attacked by Fox from the very beginning. I think that maybe we should judge the debate after we see the debate. Anderson Cooper is a long Long time, you know. Uh, long time there, what? Long time uh, liberal. No, that wasn't what I was going to say. Thank you very much. I, I was going to say long what? time newsman with a very strong reputation. Yes, he was a CGI member. Yes, we know that he has liberal leanings. He also went to the same high school as me, um, where a lot of good liberals go. And um, Can we I think close that, we that high school, by the way? You don't want to close that high school. That high school is amazing. Oh. All the future leaders come from uh, there. My question is very simple, Je Jessica. How come you guys draw Anderson Cooper and we get Jake Tapper, an actual newsman? What are you, I'm just trying to figure that one out. Are you, are you serious? I mean, it's offensive. Again, I say this every week you you two are offensive offensive why are you, why are you calling anderson cooper saying he's not a newsman 
Because he's he become, he was a newsman. What he's become is an opinion commentator yeah. with a news backdrop. I'm not knocking him. I think he's you a are great knocking guy. Him. You think that Anderson honest, Cooper would appreciate it if he called up and said, "Hey, buddy, you're hey, not a look, newsman." Look, Gwen Eiffel, Gen, guys, Jen Eiffel, Gwen Eiffel should have been eliminated when uh, reportedly she was dependent on Obama's victory in 08 because she had a book coming out, and if he did better, if he won, she would do better financially with the book. That was those were the reports said. He, uh, Anderson Cooper should be eliminated because Why? of any affiliation with the Clinton family. Foundation. This is ridiculous. There's enough journalists at CNN to choose from. Well, Wolf Blitzer wasn't on that board. Why isn't he doing it? Why is it Anderson Cooper, well, Jessica? I think that that's a really big question. I mean, I think it would be just like Sean Hannity hosting it on the Republican side. This should not be happening. And really, in Anderson Cooper, because of the Clinton Global Initiative, is tainted by the whole situation. Final word, it Jessica. should be stepping away. On I understand side. the concerns, and I think that we should wait to judge the debate until it actually happens. All right. And, of course, uh, we're going to be on with a special at 1030 uh, right here on uh, Newsmax Television. 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and we will judge the debate. We're coming back with more of this panel, though, so don't go away. I want to get paid the same as a man, and I think you understand that. So, if you become president, will a woman make the same as a man, and do I get to choose what I do with my body? You're going to make the same if you do as good a job. You're going to make the same if you do as good a job. All right, and then uh, Donald Trump went on to say, and I'm pro-life. He handled it perfectly. Welcome back to the Molesburg uh, panel. Jessica Tarlov is here. Ford O'Connell here is here. Ford O'Connell is here. Jessica's chuckling. Uh, he was asked by at an event. He called on a woman, and it turns out that that woman is Lauren Batchelder, who was just supposedly some just a person who showed up at this little rally, and she is a paid political operative of their GOP and a paid staff member of Team Jeb Bush. Uh, and I haven't heard Jeb Bush disown himself from her today, so I'm assuming uh, by his silence uh, he condoned what happened here. Uh, Jessica, you don't think he, he handled the whole situation uh, wonderfully? I think he did. Uh, let's, let's call it a terrific response, as he'd want us to say. Yeah, I think that he handled it well. He should be ready for that question. The reality is that women make 78 cents on the man's dollar when they do exactly the same job at the same quality. The war on women is going to be a major campaign. But, but Jessica, let me stop. Why are you Jessica, yelling? Jessica, 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 because this is what Hillary, this is what the they do at the you Clinton. You keep saying it over and over. Nobody ever fact checks you guys. It's about 93, 94 cents on the are dollar. Are you kidding and we know me, why. Ford? That is the basis of the Go discrimination. Go and look at the Bureau. If you, start, if you had different Jessica. education and pick different Jessica. professions, guess what? You wouldn't have this Jessica, gap. They, here's the problem. There are mitigating circumstances that enter into this from the education level right on through the employment level and the family level and having babies and leaving the workplace and coming back and all of that. And when the White House was confronted that they too pay this disparity with women, they said, oh, there are mitigating circumstances. So the same White House that cries about this, when, it's, when they're serious. confronted, say, well, you know, it's not like what it seems. So the whole thing is a red herring joke. It, it it's not a red herring Stephen, joke. And that was exactly my point. Let me say this. I do think there is some discrimination, but I do think it's closer to four to five cents on the dollar than actually this 30 cents that they continue to cycle over What a very manly over over. response. All right, I, don't want, I don't want to get into this here. I just want to, I, I think, uh, uh, Ford, what does it say that this woman, I don't know if she was paid or put up to coming to this event and trying to, 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 to trap Trump? Well, let me say this. First of all, that is the dark arts of politics, and the Bushes are barroom brawlers, and everyone <laughs> knows it. I, I think the problem here is not that this went on in a Republican primary. I think the problem here is that the mainstream media picked up on this and ran with it before they actually vetted the person. And as a result, as well as Trump answered that question, the next morning it stuck in everyone's mind that a woman stood up to Trump and Trump somehow was a bad guy. And I think that's the biggest problem here. Well, but at least he's on record now saying that he's pro-life. That was an issue for him. Before, he said that issue. before, but he needs to say it over and over again. He has a long history of being pro-choice and supporting pro-choice no, he's candidates. He's made it perfectly clear at both debates and, and since and, and let, let me tell you, this goes on, Steve, on the Democratic side, too. The only question is, is sometimes the mainstream media decides who they want to win there as well, as we saw with Reverend Wright between Obama and Clinton. Right. I'm glad you said, uh, who, I'm glad you said uh, who they want to win, because there's a new Fox News poll out today, and Jessica Hillary Clinton 
loses to Donald Trump, loses to Ben Carson by 11 points, Trump by five, Jeb Bush by four, and, uh, and uh, Carly Fiorina is up by three. She loses to all those Republicans. Now, you could spin that any way you want. Three of them have never held elective office. How do you spin that? I don't. I say it's bad. I mean, that's the reality of this. I'm not into lying for the sake of my candidate. Hillary Clinton, we know, is 20 points up on the primary side, and she's trailing in the general election field. We have two elections that she's going to have to fight. First on the Democrat side, and then she's got to go national. On the Democrat side, it looks like, you know, I don't want to call it a coronation like you did, Ford, but it looks like it's going to be an easier path to the top there. And then she's going to have to face the national populace, and right now wait, she's wait, wait. not there. FBI, open up. Come well, on. <laughs> Steve, you're right. The only way she doesn't win the nomination is if she gets indicted. If I am working for Hillary Clinton, I want to end this nomination process as quickly as right. possible so I can turn my fire on the Republicans. Right, guys, I wonder who, which, which moderator or which candidate is going to ask Hillary, hey, Sidney Blumenthal emailed you the name of a CIA operative on your unprotected email server? Is no, that no not classified? No moderator on the Democratic side is going to no ask that. But Jim, you know, nobody. but Jim Webb might. I think Jim Webb could be the dark horse in, here in terms of pushing All right. Hillary Clinton. Thank you, for it. Thank you, Jessica. We shall see what we shall see in the debate tonight, and then we'll be on at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time to talk about it right here on Newsmax TV. Give Me Five is next, but first, more than 80 million Americans make up the baby boom generation, not Jessica, uh, or maybe Jessica, and astoundingly, many of them have, no, I'm kidding, have done little to plan for their retirement. The Baby Boomer Survival Guide, though, is here to help boomers prepare with money-saving tips and valuable advice, giving baby boomers the guidance they need to thrive in retirement. Now, to see the free order for, or the free offer for your Baby Boomer Survival Guide, simply visit newsmax.com slash boomerbook. That's Newsmax.com slash Boomer Book. There it is on your screen. Or call the number on your screen, 800-251-7319. Do it now and succeed in retirement.